Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to do a two-way ANOVA without replication in Excel. And this is going to show you how to do it with Excel's data analysis tool pack and also doing it manually. Usually you'll probably not find yourself doing this type of calculation manually, but we're going to show it in there just to show you how Excel calculates all this information. So let's see how it works. We have our experiment here where we are testing the effectiveness of four different drugs on different subjects. And the ANOVA can help us identify if there's a significant difference between the drugs. This two-way, or also called a two-factor ANOVA, will help test the variability of an independent variable, or in this case it's called factors, taking into account the variance between the subjects here, which is also another factor, albeit a secondary one. So what we're looking for is to test our hypothesis. In this example, we have our H0, or no hypothesis, which states there is no significant difference in the effectiveness of the four drugs. Usually that's going to be your no hypothesis in any most types of test, be it a one-way ANOVA, two-way ANOVA. There's no difference between the variables. Now our H alternative, RHA, says there is a significant difference between the effectiveness of the four drugs. Now, using the Excel data analysis tool pack, you can go under data, and you'll see under the analysis group, it shows up under data analysis. If you don't have this here, you can just Google uh, install or download data analysis tool pack Excel, and you'll probably go to Microsoft site and you get instructions on how to do that. But since I have it available here, I'm just going to click on it and it's going to bring up my data analysis window and the one that I want is going to be the ANOVA two-factor without replication. Click OK and my input range is going to be my range here. I'm going to include my labels for my factor A and factor B. Check that label box and let's put it into the worksheet here. I'll just click any old cell here, click OK, and we have our ANOVA. Auto fit this, double click, select the column headers here, double click it to auto fit, and so what we're looking here is the variability in the drugs, all right? The columns. So we're going to look at our column values here. And what's important is our F value, and we're going to compare it to our F critical value. So our F value, let's highlight this. And let's highlight the F critical value here too. And what this is telling us, you can see that our F value is less than our F critical value. When we have that case, we are going to accept the no hypothesis. There is no significant difference in the effectiveness of the four drugs. In addition, our P value is greater than our alpha, which is 0.05. And that tells us that we can also accept the no hypothesis. So when we went to data analysis and we did without replication, the alpha that we selected, the default alpha here is 0.05, right? So our p-value, let's cancel that, our p-value is greater than 0.05, so we must accept the null hypothesis. So for the most part, Excel makes it really easy, or other statistical tools make it really easy to do this. However, if you want to get challenged and you want to see how the calculations are done, let's go to our next tab. So here we are in our tab here where we're going to do this all manually. You see we have our sum of squares calculations here, our degrees of freedom calculations, our mean of sum of squares calculation here, and our F uh, values, or F critical, or F ratio here. So the first thing we need to do is we need to find out the averages. So let's find out the averages for the columns, factor A. All you need to do is type average and select that and select our averages here. Press enter and we have our average there. Drag our fill handle over here and it gives us our average for drugs one to four. That's factor A. Then let's figure out our averages or mean for factor B, our subjects. Equals average. Click on that. Select my values here. Press enter. Double click the fill handle or drag the fill handle. I'm going to double click it now and it's going to have my averages laid out here. I also want my total averages 
these are going to be the averages of my 12 observations. So I can just type average, click that, and select all my values here, press enter, and it's 152.538. You also know that this can also equal the average of this, 152.538, or the average of, let's delete this, the average of these four values, our column values, and it gives us the same thing. But I'm just going to select everything here. My drug one, subject one, two, drug four, subject three, press enter, that's going to be the same value, right? After I get my means, I need to start to perform the calculations to get me to the sum of squares for each of the items here. My sum of squares for factor A, which is SSA here, sum of squares for factor B, sum of squares for my errors, and sum of squares for my total. So let's start that. Let's start to perform the calculations so I can do my sum of squares for factor A. First, I need to get the difference from the total mean. And what I need to do is take that, that mean for the column and minus the total. I'm going to select the total mean and press F4, so that locks those values in. There's a dollar sign in front of the H and 7. So when I copy it across, that stays the same, but this C7 is going to turn to D7, D8, and D9. I'm going to press Enter, and you have that value there because I selected H7 where I should have selected G7. So let's make that G7. And that becomes 11.75. Drag the fill handle, and I have my values there. And I need to square these values to start to add the calculation into there. So it's going to equal to that value, caret sign 2, which is the square of that. And that gives me 138 for that value. Drag the fill handle, and it's going to copy the formula over here. I want to do the same thing for my factor B, which are my rows. So I'm going to take equals that mean for that row minus my total also select press F4 so I lock that in when I copy it down press enter it gives me that drag the fill handle down so I can copy the formula down and now I want to take that and square it so that value caret sign squared press enter gives me 19 50694 double click or drag the fill handle down and I get my square values there so let's figure out our sum of squares for our total, factor A, factor B, and error. But before we do that, let's bring in our table here. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so it copies over a little bit easier. Select that. Select my table here. Control C to copy. And let's go Control V to paste. That kind of overlap there. Let's delete this. All right. Uh, one thing we also need to do is add in our number of observations. So our total observa observations are going to be 12, right? Because we have four drugs, three subjects. The total is going to be 12. And I'll just put 12 in here. Factor A, of course, factor A is that we have four drugs for factor A, so that's going to be four. Factor B is we have three subjects, so that's going to be three here. Press Enter. So now what we need to do is let's do our sum of squares total. So our sum of squares total, uh, for the total, basically you're just summing up all the values here. So if I select all of that, press enter, we have our 5594.917. For the sum of squares A, that's going to be equal to my sum of squares for these values. Whoops, let's delete that and select my ranges here and then close parentheses, but in this case, I also need, I need to multiply that by factor B, because we're looking at the variability of the, our drugs, taking into account of the variability of our subjects, so we're gonna include that value, press enter, that gives us 116917. We're gonna do the same thing for the sum of squares for factor A, sum, press tab to open that up, and add up my sums there, my, sum, my squares there, and also multiply that by factor A, because if we wanted to look at the variability of factor B, that's what it's going to give us that value there. Press enter, and that is 127.1667. For my sum of squares for the errors, all it is is the sum of squares total minus sum of squares A minus sum of squares B. So just type equal 
sum of squares total minus that minus that and we get our value there. Our degrees of freedom total is our observations n minus 1 which is our value here so that is equal to 12 minus 1. Degrees of freedom A is going to be A minus 1. Degrees of freedom B is B minus 1. So we're just going to take that value factor A minus 1 do the same thing for B that's going to be our observations of our sub factor B subjects minus 1 press enter and degrees of freedom for our error is pretty much the product of degrees of freedom for A multiplied by the degrees of freedom for B and that gives us 6. So how do we get our mean squares? So MSA is SSA divided by the degrees of freedom. SS MSB is the S sum of squares for factor B divided by the degrees of freedom and the same thing for the error. So all we need to do is type equal that divided by degrees of freedom A and equals to that divided by degrees of freedom B and the same thing for our error, right? The sum of squares error divided by degrees of freedom E. If we want to do the total, it's basically the same thing. Our sum of squares for our total divided by the degrees of freedom here. And that gives us our values there. You can notice that our values are similar. Our mean squared A, 372, 3056, same thing here. Our columns, our factor A, it's the same thing. Our mean squared B, which is our factor B, is 63.58. And we get our 63.58, which is our rows, our factor B here, right? Same with our mean squared error, 75, 725, 1389, 725, 1389. So, so we got our values where we can perform the F ratio. So for the F ratio for factor A, it's basically MSA over MSE. So all we need to do is equal MSA divided by the MSE, which gives us 5.13427. You can see that the value is there. So I'm just going to highlight that. And we also have our factor B, which is MSB divided by our mean squared error here, which gives us 0.087684, which is this value there. I'm not going to highlight that because we're looking at factor A. We're looking at the drugs. Remember our hypothesis. We are testing the effectiveness of the four different drugs, not the subjects. But we're taking into account of the variability of our subjects. So I'm not going to highlight the rows. I'm just going to highlight the columns. So our F critical value, how do we find the critical value? You can see Excel has already done it for you here. But how do we figure this out? Well, there's a function called f dot inverse dot rt we just need the probability of course our probability we had mentioned earlier is 0.05 that was our alpha so our degrees of freedom is going to be a degrees of freedom for factor a which is here and then our degrees of freedom for the error which is that one i'm going to press the f4 key to lock that one for the error down because i want to copy it over I want to that to stay the same, but the other values will be different. M9 is going to change into N9. Press Enter, and we have 4.75, which is our F critical value there. If I drag this over, we're going to have 5.14, which is our F critical value there. So is my F ratio greater than my F critical value? I'll say F ratio greater than that, and that's false. It is not greater than that. Let's drag this over just to complete it. But we are concerned with factor A, our drugs, right? So is it greater than their F critical value? No. So that means that we need to accept. We do not reject the null hypothesis, right? And it's telling us here, factor A ratio, 513, the critical value, 4.75, which coincides with that. And so we look and see that our F ratio is less than our critical value we do not reject the null hypothesis. So that's how we can do a two-way ANOVA without replication. Of course, the easiest way is to use the calculations tools that are already available in Excel. This two-way ANOVA, if we go under data and data analysis, the tool pack gives us that two-way factor without replication. If you want to challenge yourself and do it manually, you can do it this way. 
and figure it out all by yourself. Of course, it takes much longer, but the, these are the calculations that are behind uh, this output that you see here. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.